Okay, there we go. So today we have this painting here. Um, we are going to, so to your comment, we will be um, doing the ocean scene here. I've got the reference photo up on my computer as well, so I'll be referring to that too. This is a gouache painting, so it's a different medium than watercolor. Um, and so the painting that we're gonna do today is gonna look a little different than this, but this is kind of the inspiration. So we're gonna kind of work from top to bottom here. We're gonna start with the sky, put in this land here, and then work toward the ocean and the beach. Um, and hopefully it will turn out okay. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, my materials really quick, because I always get questions. My watercolor paper is Strathmore. Um, it is fairly cheap and you can get it at any art or craft store or online. Uh, my paints are Windsor & Newton. These are professional grade watercolor paints, but you do not need those. Um, these are just what I'm comfortable with, but whatever watercolor paints you have are totally fine. Will work just fine. And then my brushes, I've got, let me pick out my other brushes here. I've got Princeton Neptune brushes. These are always my favorites. These are a bit more of an investment, but I'd really recommend these if you are looking for some new watercolor brushes. They hold up really well. I've had these for like two years. Um, you can swipe to get rid of the comments on the screen, I believe. Um, and then all of my art supply recommendations, including this stuff, but like everything else that I've really tried and I like, is linked in my bio. I've got a tab called art supply recommendations. Um, and that'll take you to my Amazon storefront um, where I get a little bit of a cut, which is nice for me. And then you get to see all of my art supply recommendations. So that is helpful for you, if that is helpful for you as well. If you're looking for some recommendations from me, that's where you can check that out. Okay, so our first thing that we need to do is uh, put a little drop of water in each of our watercolor paints. And this is what we start out every painting with because it gets our watercolor paints ready to work with, kind of starts to dissolve them. Um, and we will be able to work with them later. We might not use every color, but I like to just do it for every color just so I have them ready. And uh, while we're doing this, just so you know, this is Paint and Sip. I do this every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're just dropping in right now, welcome. I'm happy you're here. This will get uploaded to YouTube afterwards. Um, and then also, please, if you are painting along with me, I'm glad that you are. This is just a time for us to be creative together and um, to try out something new and hopefully for you to learn something. So don't worry too much about the outcome of your painting. We are just doing it in an hour. It is just mostly an exercise and something to learn. So um, be gentle with yourself. Be nice to other people in the comments, please. Be nice to me, all of that good stuff. And feel free to ask questions as well. Um, I will try to get to most of them, but I do have to paint and talk at the same time. So. I'll do my best, but I can't make any promises. So the first thing that we need to do with uh, this painting is find our horizon line. And in our reference photo here, let me show it to you. You can see that the horizon line is about halfway up. It's a little bit under halfway up. This is the reference photo that I took. Um, and so our horizon line is here where the water meets the sky slash the land here. So we need to do this first mark out where that's going to be and i'm going to use a ruler just for um, my own purposes but you do not have to so i'm going to do a little bit below halfway on each side I like to mark it and then you can either use the ruler to draw a straight line or if you want to be extra fancy you can use a piece of tape and you can um, tape out the horizon line and this will just make it a little bit easier to get a nice straight horizon line. So it is up to you. You do not have to do this if you don't want to or if you don't have tape, but this is what I like to do. The picture is from uh, Kalini Beach in Ireland. I went to Ireland in July, lovely trip, and um, my friend and I went to Kalini Beach, which is where she used to live. It's where uh, bon it's kind of close to where Bono from U2 lives now, I think, actually. Um, but it's a very pretty beach and it reminds me of home. I'm from Washington and it was very much like the beaches in Washington, so that was kind of cool. Okay, so now we've got our tape down horizon line. We're going to start off with the sky area. So um, we're gonna do kind of a wet on wet technique because it's kind of a cloudy blue sky. So what we need is just a sky blue color in our palette. I like to mix a couple of these together just to get a nice sky blue, but you can use whatever blue you have in your palette and just mix a little bit on there. Reminds me of some of the beaches in Michigan as well. Nice. 
yeah, it's interesting how you can go around the world and things remind you of home really strongly. Okay, so once you have your blue, uh, yes, yeah, so you can get it on Amazon iOS. I got it from my local art store, which is where I also recommend checking out whatever art store you have nearby. So for this sky, we're gonna put a layer of water down in this top section here. And then we're gonna mix our blue into that layer of water and it's gonna blend out and make a really nice um, kind of cloudy sky pattern. So I'm just using water from my cup here and I'm gonna put down a layer of water. We want to make sure the whole paper is covered with a decent layer of water. We don't want super large puddles, but um, we do wanna make sure we have enough water for the paint to run. So I recommend tilting your head so you can see the light reflecting off of it. That way you can see if you've missed any spots. And depending on the humidity of where you're at, um, this will dry slower or faster. So just keep that in mind. And then we'll take our blue and starting at the top, just start putting in little swoopies, I guess. <laughs> I like to have some movement in this. So I'm kind of going back and forth with my brush, making little random shapes. And as we get toward the horizon line here, you don't wanna go back in for more paint because you want it to fade out like this to get nice and light toward the horizon line. So you can see the blue is stronger up at the top and then down toward the bottom, it is lighter. Now you can just leave it like that if you'd like to. I like to pick mine up and kind of tilt it a little bit. That will help it to blend together a little bit better. It gives you a nice soft blend between the blank parts of the sky and the blue. And then once you've gotten it to a place that you like it, you can just put it flat again and it'll stop moving. And another thing that you can do as well is uh, use a dry brush to pick up some of that extra paint. I just wipe mine off on my paper towel in between doing this. And you can kind of make some more defined cloud shapes doing this. You get a little bit more accuracy. So I like to kind of fluff up the clouds a little bit. So again, that's just using a dry brush. All of that is optional. You can do whatever you feel is best for your painting. You can only do this while it's wet, so you gotta make your choice though. Once it's dry, it is done. So you can see I can kind of fluff up these clouds with my brush. I got it at my art at the art store that's nearby. It's called Plaza, which is I think in the Midwest and the East Coast. Um, but Blick is also a good nationwide art store. Yep, it'll be on YouTube later. Adjust this really quick. There we go. Okay, so there's our sky. Pretty easy. Not too bad. I like, this is my favorite way to do a sky. It's a really nice um, kind of easy way to get that done and it'll look really nice in the background with minimal effort, which is what we're always after. Okay, how's everybody doing with that? Are we ready to move on? Do we need to, what, do we need a minute? Yeah, I can show the picture that we're doing here. Here it is. This is in gouache, so it's gonna look a little different from this, but this is the, This is the painting that we're going for. If you could tell us which picture we're doing. So I always do whichever one has the most votes in my, uh, in the paint and sip announcement. So whichever one, you know, I, I post those comments of vote for number one, vote for number two. Whichever one has the most likes is the one that I pick. So you can always just go to that video and you'll be able to see which one we're gonna do. So our next step is to do this little piece of land here that is um, in the distance, kind of sticking out over the ocean. So we're gonna need some greens and kind of some browns here. We're just gonna do this pretty um, loosely. It's in the distance, so we don't need a whole lot of detail, okay? So for that, we are going to mix together um, a dark green, a light green, and kind of a tannish brown, and then maybe a dark brown as well. We'll see. So I like to just do a lighter green. So I'm gonna take whatever green is in my palette and to make it lighter, I'm gonna mix some yellow into it. 
I like to, when I'm mixing greens, I like to add yellow to make it lighter and blue to make it darker instead of adding black and white. It just gives you a more um, vibrant color. I like how the sky looks like a sky with minimum effort. Yeah, exactly. That's my favorite kind of, that's why it's my favorite kind of sky. We're all about the minimum effort here. Okay, so then we do a dark green and we mix some blue into it and that will give you a really nice dark green without having to mix black into it. You can also add a little bit of brown if you want to kind of dull down the color a little bit, which I like to do. So there's that dark green. I'll swatch these for you. You don't have to match my colors exactly, but I'm just gonna kind of give you where I'm going with this. Can you put the picture above your tin? Yeah, there we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. And the light green looks like this. So those are the two greens. And then we're going to do a kind of tannish brown. So I've got yellow ochre. You can just use whatever yellow you have mixed with some brown. It's a little bit darker than I wanted, but that's okay. Kind of a light brown. There we go. These usually take an hour. We'll be done with this by about 4 p.m. Eastern time. This is also the last painting in this little uh, sketchbook that I have. This is just for paint and sips. So if you'd like to stick around to the end, I will be going over all of the previous paintings that we've done in this sketchbook, which is always a fun time to look back on. Okay, and then a dark brown, whatever brown you have in your palette, you're welcome to just use that. You can add a little bit of blue or black or something like that just to make it a little bit darker if you need. Okay, so those are our colors. Dark green, light green, light brown, dark brown. And again, you do not have to match my colors exactly. This is just where we're kind of going with this. Okay, now make sure that your sky is mostly dry and we can uh, trace out where you want the land to go or you can just freehand it, that is up to you. I'm just gonna kind of do a hill you can see it's like a hill here and then it kind of fades out into this uh, short piece of land over here. So something like that. You can just use a pencil to mark out where that wants to go. And it's gonna go about halfway across the paper. You can go a little bit more if you want to. You can see that this tip here is just a little bit past halfway on the painting. It's an hour long time I need to pick up my spouse from the airport. Nice. <laughs> okay, so then once you have that, we are just gonna kind of go back and forth between all of these colors that we just mixed. I'm gonna show you on here. So we can see in this piece of land here, the dark green is at the top, light green is kind of in the middle, light brown is next to that light green, and then the dark brown is for this part uh, right by the horizon line right here where the water kind of goes up during high tide, that's where the dark brown is going to go. So we're just gonna kind of mix, do all of those at the same time so that those colors mix together a little bit in the in this section. And I will kind of demonstrate and you're welcome to just watch and then follow along afterwards if you are not sure where we're going. So I'm gonna start with the dark green at the top, give it a little bit of texture at the top here, like it's the tops of trees. Don't just do like a straight line across, just do a some up and down strokes to give you some texture. Bring that kind of down here, put a little bit more dark green in here. And then I'm going to quickly switch to my lighter green and start filling in some of those sections that I left out. As long as you do this relatively quickly, those colors should blend together pretty well. They don't need to blend together all the way. I've got a fan going in here as well, so they do dry really quick for me. Bring that kind of over here, and then we'll switch to that lighter brown. You don't really need to wash your brush in between these colors because you're mixing them all together anyway, so don't worry about washing your brush. Just get the colors down. Fill in the rest with the dark brown. Let 
Remember, we're concentrating that dark brown kind of on the bottom here where the water meets the, the land up there. Okay, you can throw in a few extra details as it dries if you want to, just some texture in there, but that's mostly what it's, what the idea is there. So it's not very detailed, we're, we're just doing kind of, you know, the lack of detail puts it further in the distance and that's kind of what we want. I'm gonna throw a little bit of um, gray into this as well just because it's looking a little too brown for me. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of gray kind of mixed in with that dark brown as a little bit of texture, just to kind of cool it down a little bit because it's looking a little bit too brown for me. Okay, perfect. Let's see if I've missed any burning questions here plan on painting here soon, so I can't wait to start doing along with you. Perfect, I'm glad. Fan sounds like waves, good. I'm glad it doesn't sound annoying. <laughs> okay, cool. And thank you all for the likes as well. We're up to 16.5 thousand, that's awesome. You can just double tap the screen to send me likes. It just helps me out with the algorithm. Um, and while we're waiting here, I do want to say that I have my Venmo listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So if you're enjoying the session today and you'd like to leave me a little tip or a gift, you can do that. Um, and that is always very helpful. And uh, my Etsy shop is linked in there too. Plug that. This painting is actually, this painting here is actually for sale in my Etsy shop if you'd like to check that out. Okay. Cool, thank you all so much for the likes. Yes, it is a Windsor Newton palette. Part of Washington, are you from? I grew up in Sammamish. Uh, my parents live in Seattle now though. Sammamish is a small town in the suburbs on the east side of Seattle. East of Seattle, I should say. Um, all right, so now that we are done with that, we can take off our tape here and we have this lovely nice straight horizon line that we can, I'm from Yakima, nice, very good, the Palm Springs of Washington. Um, now we have this lovely straight line of a horizon that we can now work with um, and put down our ocean. So the first thing we need to do is uh, just sketch out the rest of the painting. So we are going to do, we're going to sketch out kind of where the water meets the beach here and then maybe a few of these rocks, I don't want to do all of these rocks we're gonna kind of use some artistic license here. Chelan, I love Chelan. And um, we're gonna use some artistic license here and maybe just do a couple of rocks. I don't, we don't need to do too many. <laughs> oh, too fast? Okay. I will take a, a quick break. If you have any questions um, for me, art related, I'm happy to answer them. We can kind of slowly sketch out where that beach goes, which is just kind of a diagonal line starting from the top here and working toward the bottom corner on the right. It's nothing really all that special, just kind of a wavy line going in that direction. How fast do watercolors usually dry? Do you have to work fast when painting with them? So watercolors, since they're mostly water, it kind of depends on, um, it depends on the humidity and where you're at and airflow and all that stuff. Um, so here, it is not very, I'm in Cincinnati, so usually it's pretty humid here, but the last couple of days it's been a little bit drier, which has been nice, and I also have a fan going in here, so it, it's drying a lot faster than I'm used to. Um, but, you know, if you live in a dry climate, it will dry pretty fast. So you just have to be aware of what, you know, your climate is, <laughs> how, um, how quickly your water is going to dry. Yes, I do love Bob Ross. I used to watch them very religiously before I went to sleep. Do you prefer acrylic or watercolor? I, um, I don't, acrylic is probably my least favorite of the mediums that I do regularly just because it dries so fast. I like watercolor, I like gouache, I like oil paint, um, and I kind of cycle through all of those. Oh, lots of Cincinnati people, very nice, very good. I've been here for about three years. Yep, no problem. 
we got plenty of time here. We're good on time. So we're just gonna take a quick break here and answer some questions and then we'll get back to the painting just so everyone catches up. Just came across your life here, checked out your page. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. My paper wasn't dry and the mountain is bleeding into the sky. What can I do to help it? So you can kind of just let it go. It will give you kind of a misty, cool watercolory look. So don't worry about it too much, but you can also take a dry brush and kind of uh, shore up where it's leaking too much. Like what we did with the clouds where you pick up that extra paint. You can do that and kind of carve back out your, um, the land back here. Keep it from, um, keep it from bleeding too much. Thank you. What do you do when the paper starts peeling? Um, I don't really have too much of a problem with that because the Strathmore paper doesn't peel. Um, if you're not using watercolor paper, that can happen. So I would recommend just, you know, getting some watercolor paper if you haven't already and using that. I like Strathmore personally. I think they do a good job and it's cheap. So if you need some intro level watercolor paper, that is a place to go. I also like Arches watercolor paper, but it's a little bit um, more expensive. Yes, 100% cotton is great. It just can be more expensive. I'm painting on rocks, nice. Okay, we can throw in, in this sketch here, we can also throw in a few rocks, just, you know, whatever shape you want. A few that are kind of sticking out into the water here. They should be flat on the bottom because they are um, sitting in the water, but then you can make them whatever shape on the top that you want. Like I said, we're just gonna use some artistic license here and just do a few rocks because I don't feel like painting all of those. Maybe one like back here. There we go, that's probably enough rocks. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the this next section here. We're gonna do the first layer of the water and the beach all at the same time. So we're going to mix a few colors first so that they're all ready, and then we're gonna put them all down on the paper, uh, do a couple of picking up the paint with dry brush thing that we've done already. And then we'll let that dry and then we'll put some details on the top. So that's kind of the game plan here. So for the colors, we need this dark green. So save this dark green that we just used for the land. If you cleaned it up already, um, just make some again. Whatever dark green you used for this land section here, we need that again. That's one of our colors. So dark green, and then we need a sky blue. So what we used before for the sky, whatever color that you mixed for the sky before, make some more of that. And then our other two colors, we need a gray, kind of a bluish gray. So if you want to just simplify that, mix together this sky blue with a little bit of black. If you wanna be a little bit more, um, if you wanna try a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Experimental color mixing, you can try mixing a little bit of brown in, and that will give you a, a nice gray as well. But if you don't wanna deal with that, just make a, gray with blue and black. I will swatch all of these new colors for you. So here's the gray. We want it to be a nice blue gray. And then our last color is kind of a, a warm gray. So we want this to be the color of the beach here. So I'm gonna take brown, it'll be mostly brown, and you're gonna mix just a little bit of blue into it. You can mix a little bit of red in there as well if you want to really warm it up. And then we're gonna water that down. So it should be, you know, mostly brown, but a touch of blue to make it more on the gray side, a warm gray. Oh, that was too much. Mess that one up. There we go. That should be good. So, there we go. 
it does look brown. I should just say kind of a brown. <laughs> okay, so those are our colors. We are going to do a, we're gonna be brave and we're gonna do a wet on wet technique for this bottom section as well. <laughs> and it's gonna be okay. I am also kind of, you know, preparing. Actually, are we? Let me think here for a second. Yeah, we're gonna give it a try because we're gonna do more layers on top. So it's gonna be fine. So we're gonna cover this whole bottom section with water like we did for the sky. And then we're gonna put these colors in, in in specific spots and I will kind of tell you where those go. So the these three colors that we mix, the sky blue, the green, and the, the um, gray are going to go in the water section kind of loosely. It'll run a little bit, but don't worry. And then this brown that we mixed last is gonna go on the beach section, okay? It's all going to run together, but that's just kind of theoretically where these colors are gonna go. So take some water from your cup, throw it down in this bottom section here. Again, I recommend tilting your head so that you can see the spots that you've missed. Make sure everything's fully covered. Okay. Now we're gonna work from uh, right to left. So start with your gray. You're gonna kind of go back and forth between your gray and your sky blue. Horizontal strokes, throw that gray in, in this water section. Horizontal strokes again, keep it horizontal. That will make it read like water. Switch to your sky blue, throw that in as well. Horizontal strokes, we're just kind of keeping it relatively in the water section here. And then as we get over here, we're gonna do the dark green. So we switch to the dark green to mirror the land over here. And that's gonna go in here. Horizontal strokes, keep with that. And then any spots that you can fill in, you can fill it in with gray or blue, up to you. Leave a little bit of white as well, if you haven't already. And then we're gonna take this brown, fill it in, in the rest of the, let it kind of blend together with those other colors. Kind of blend it in with the water. Okay, now we can just leave it like this move this up for you to see a little bit or we're going to take a dry brush and again horizontal strokes pick out a little bit of some highlights so I'm just going to expand on any of these lighter sections that kind of stayed pick out some little this will show like as ripples on the water make sure you do this relatively quickly so that it shows up properly. Because once it dries, you will not be able to do this anymore. Okay, that's good. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put a little bit of uh, detail on top of that. So that's kind of the underpainting there. We've got a little bit more detail to do on top, um, but that is how we get a lot of the expression of watercolor is being brave and letting the colors kind of mix together like this. So yeah, that's kind of the point of that. So we need this to dry. If you have any art related questions, feel free to send them again. I will answer a few and then we will do our kind of final layer on this with some detail. And that will be mostly it. Rocks, yes. We painted directly over the rocks. We're gonna paint the rocks gray in the next section. So we're just painting straight over them right now. What watercolor kit and brushes are you using? Um, this is Windsor Newton watercolors. I can't flip to show you the brand, but it's Windsor Newton. And then uh, brushes are Princeton Neptune. Thank you. Yes, I do do this weekly. This is uh, every Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern time.
Your land has trees, mine looks like a blob. This is a good time to remember that we are just practicing here. It does not have to look exactly like mine. Um, you did not do it wrong. You did not do it incorrectly or anything like that. This is just to practice. And there's only so much that I can um, kind of show you. And however you do it is totally fine. It is not incorrect. You're just here to practice and learn and make your own painting. How long have you been painting for? Uh, my whole life, I believe. Can you put watercolor in the link? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, in the link in my bio, I have all my art supply recommendations. I'm not sure if that's what you mean. But I don't know what other link means. <laughs> Can we see the photo again? Yep. Here's the painting. Green paint is making his smile. Yeah, I see that. That's funny. And then here is the reference photo. So we're just going to put some detail in this section here, and then we'll be mostly done. Type of paper. It is watercolor paper. Strathmore is the brand. I'm so bad at scaling things. My island is so large, but that's okay. Yeah, that's totally fine. It does not have to look like mine. It is okay. You're like a TikTok version of Bob Ross. I have heard that before. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. I do appreciate you all being here as well. It's fun to paint with you all every week. What are suggestions you have for someone just starting? Uh, people hear this every week, but I would say, don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making bad paintings. Um, you will not, most people, including myself, do not start out making amazing paintings. There are very few savants, art savants in this world. So you will make a lot of bad paintings. You will never stop making bad paintings. It is not, it does not mean you're a bad artist. It means you're actually an artist if you're making paintings and you're making bad paintings. So just be okay with, with whatever happens. Learn something from your paintings and um, don't be afraid of, of messing up or making bad paintings, you know? Remember you have to be bad at something to get good at something. Absolutely. And I think I have, you know, when people who draw from the time that they're children have a little bit of advantage here because when we're kids, we draw bad paintings all the time. We make bad paintings, bad drawings. Kids' drawings are hardly ever good, right? Um, but that's okay. We're just, you know, as it, when you're a kid, you're just having fun making a painting. You don't care that it doesn't end up good. But as adults, we kind of lose that ability to um, just enjoy something without needing to be good at it. And so... When you start, if you haven't painted for a long time and you start as an adult, it can be really hard to, um, you know, rediscover that joy of just doing something to do it and not having to be good at it. Um, so try and tap into that and, um, you know, enjoy the process of painting, enjoy the process of learning and don't try to be making masterpieces and don't be discouraged by bad paintings. So that's my little soapbox that I always get on when people ask that question, but I really do believe it. I've just started painting. Any tips? Every, everything I just said. <laughs> people said Picasso made bad paintings too. Yes, exactly. Art is entirely subjective. So what you should be kind of focusing on getting out of it is fun and learning and some sort of creative enjoyment and fulfillment. Okay, my painting is mostly dry, so we're going to kind of move on to our next steps. So we have a few, um, just kind of outline them for you. We're going to darken up this shadow here and give ourselves some more uh, ripples. We might do a little bit more texture um, with these colors here on the rest of the ocean too. And then we're going to fill in the rocks and then do a little bit of texture on the beach. So we'll do the, all of that. I will, we'll do that one at a time, but I just wanna give you the, the overview. Okay, so let's start with the green section. So get your dark green color back if it's dry. Make a little bit more of it if you need to. And whoa, with this, I'm using a smaller brush now and I'm going to tilt this because I am right-handed. Um, we're just going to add a few horizontal ripples here underneath the land section. Um, I like to kind of do this lightly so that I get some parts of the underpainting that peek through. 
And we're just gonna add a few ripples just to kind of darken this color a little bit. I think that needs to be a little bit darker. Remember that watercolor paint dries lighter than it looks when you first put it down when it's wet. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you might need to course correct and darken your color. Okay, that's gonna go down too. Just a little ways down here. I'm just starting to kind of break up these lines. I'm using really light pressure with my brush and just letting it touch every once in a while. And that gives me this nice kind of random ripple texture. I can show that close up here. I am not left-handed, <laughs> yeah. It's a good movie. So that's kind of what that should look like. Nothing too um, complicated there. And then, while we're speaking of water textures, other things that we can do to this water section, I'm gonna use the gray that we have and this, um, and this smaller brush. And I'm going to go from the side, really lightly touch and just add a few more kind of ripples and details like this. And if you use the side of your brush and go lightly, the texture of the watercolor paper should kind of break up the paint. And so you should get this kind of texture here. Yes, I do lean my hand on the table. You should kind of get this texture here where, you know, you have some sections of these brush strokes where it's filled in with the color and then some where it's broken over the texture of the watercolor paper. It does take a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but it's a really great tool to use when you're painting water because it's a really nice natural water texture that you don't have to painstakingly um, paint in with a small brush, you know. So that's kind of how that looks. Those are the two little water details that I want you to do. This one and this one. Sorry, could you say that again? Yep. Um, so that, so we have the ripples here, which were just kind of horizontal lines. Sorry, there's a motorcycle going by. Horizontal lines with that dark green, uh, just kind of filling in up until about here. And then with the gray, you're using the side of your brush. I have a round brush, but whatever brush you want, I'm holding it basically horizontal per parallel to the paper. And we're just letting kind of the side of it touch as we scrape it across the paper. And in some places it'll completely fill in, but some places it'll break over the texture of the watercolor paper. And that's what we want to get this texture here. So you're holding it, the brush, really, really close to sideways, letting the side of it kind of scrape along the paper lightly. Okay. So those are those two textures. Getting into watercolors, but it always turns out splotchy, if you know what I mean. Yes, well, <laughs> watercolors will be splotchy. Those are called blooms, um, and that will happen fairly frequently. It kind of it happens when parts of your paper dry faster than others, which is not something that you can necessarily help. Having good watercolor paper does help. Um, so this is Strathmore. It's not really that expensive, but it is decent quality. Other papers as well. Um, and then just practice and knowing like what will cause that. You won't ever get rid of it completely. It's, it, it, it like happens a lot, um, but you can, there are some, you know, couple things to do. Try not to, adding all your color kind of at once and not continuing to work with it while it's wet, if you know what I mean. That's something that can help. I don't know if I'm explaining all of this correctly, but. Okay, for the rocks, I'm gonna use a light brown, kind of what we used for this land back here. Um, and we're gonna fill in these rocks with the light brown, and then we'll do a dark brown on the very bottom of the rocks. And because we're doing this over the blue, they should kind of get this neutral brown color because we're painting over the blue color. So there's one. Just filling them in. Just 
scraping method for the gray texture is amazing. Good, I'm glad you like it. Uh, yeah, this video will be on my YouTube channel, which is linked in my bio. Um, the previous paint sips are up there too. The previous paint sips before the ones that are on YouTube are on my Instagram, which is same handle as TikTok. Um, I used to upload them there, but Instagram changed their um, format, so I can't upload long videos there anymore. Um, so all of my paint and sips go on YouTube now, but you can find the previous ones still on Instagram if you need to see those too. This is number 68, so numbers 60 and below are on Instagram. Okay. More over here. So there's our rocks filled in. Where did you learn these little techniques? Um, well, lots of different places. Some of them I've just kind of discovered myself after, I couldn't tell you which ones, but some of them I've just kind of figured out myself since I've been painting for so long. I've had watercolor books, you know, in the past. Um, I, I took some art classes in school, in high school and in college, so some of them have come from there. Um, but generally, I couldn't really tell you exactly where. Okay, so now I'm taking a dark brown and we're just gonna fill in the bottom of the rocks and then we're gonna put a little bit of texture onto the rocks on the left side. So we're gonna imagine our light source is coming from the right here and looking down. So the right side of our rocks should be, um, the right, right side of our rocks should be left alone and then the shadow can be put in on the left side. So I can show that closer up here. So I'm going to use the brown. Let's see, there you go, you can see it there. To just fill in the bottom first. And then I'm just kind of using this um, dotting motion to add some shadow on the left side of the rock and then this texture. So you can see what that kind of looks like there. So it's, not, it's nothing like super detailed, it's just enough um, kind of texture for the viewer to think, oh, those are rocks that are sitting in the water. How long does one palette last? Um, it lasts, well, I don't know. I, um, I mean, I, so I refill these colors with uh, liquid watercolor, tube watercolor, when they run out. So I've had this palette for two years uh, and some of the colors are original. I haven't replaced them, but a lot of them I've replaced and refilled with um, tube watercolor. So you don't have to, which is nice because then I don't have to buy a new one every time I run out of one color. This will be uploaded to YouTube in uh, probably later today or tomorrow. Sometimes I don't get to it until the next day. <laughs> okay, we have a couple other steps here just to finish up this beach. Um, the first thing that we were gonna do is just add a little bit of shadow or like a little bit of a reflection to these rocks, which I probably should have mentioned before. Um, we're gonna take the same dark brown and for any of the rocks in the water, make sure you're not doing this to the rocks that are on land. Um, you're just going to add a few of these ripples, similar to how we did the dark green ones here. Just a few ripples underneath the rocks. Nothing super fancy. Kind of echo the shape and size of the rocks that you're reflecting here. And just pay attention to the ones that are not in the water. So it just looks like that. Just a few little ripples. Since I don't have watercolor paints, could I use watered down gouache to get the same result? I believe so. Water, uh, gouache can be used as watercolor. It might not be quite as transparent, um, but that is also that can be a good thing too. So you should definitely try it. It would probably work. The brand name of the paint is Windsor Newton. Okay. Last last couple of things here. Um, I want to put a little bit of a darker kind of tone lining where the water meets the beach, just about halfway up here. Um, and that will be where these rocks are wet. So I'll show you this. 
and then we're going to do a fun texture for the rest of the beach. Um, so we're going to just do a slightly darker brown for up until about halfway up the beach here. You can see that there's a darker kind of lining of the water here where the rocks are wet. So that's what we're going to do. Use this dark brown that we've already been using, same color. And we're going to water it down a little bit because we don't want this to be too strong. So make sure it's watered down. Like that. And then we're just going to go along the edge here. Kind of wiggle our brush around a little bit so it's not a super straight line. And that'll be our can kind of blend out the other edge of that. So the edge that's on the beach, you can kind of blend that out with some water if you'd like. Should just kind of define where that water is and where the beach is. There we go. Okay. That was just the same dark brown that we've been using. It's just watered down. And now for the fun part of this, um, we are going to do some paint flicking onto the beach here. And this is my favorite way to paint rocky beaches because I'm not gonna sit here and draw out all of the individual rocks. So uh, we do need a couple of paper towels or scrap paper or anything like that. And you're going to cover up the areas of your painting and kind of the edges here that are not on the beach. So the point of this is to have some chaos but control it <laughs> to where we want it to be. So I've just got my paper towels here kind of protecting the rest of my painting. So um, the colors that you're going to use, I'm gonna take this off while I mix the colors. Um, you can use any color really that you want, honestly. Um, you can kind of mix together a few colors. I like to use burnt sienna, which is kind of this orange here. And the key to this is to water it down enough that it's pretty liquidy so that we can flick it. Um, we can use some brown. I would recommend blue as well. will go well with these. You can use yellow. Um, I'm probably gonna do this burnt sienna, brown and blue. My, those are going to be my three colors. I would recommend just picking two or three colors to do this with that are relatively different. Water them down. And then we'll get started. So put that paper towel back. Pick a color to start with. I'm gonna start with my blue, load up a bunch on your brush, and then I just like to tap. I like to hold the brush over the section that we're working on, where I want the paint to go, and just lightly tap the brush. And that will flick some of this paint down there in a random way. You wanna concentrate these uh, on the bottom of your painting. So as we move up here, this gets further away, so we won't see as much detail up here. So I'm just trying to concentrate these paint um, droplets on the bottom, um, the bottom most section of the beach. Okay, I'm gonna move to my next color here. Which is the burnt sienna. Stop that go. Things are moving around from the fan. And you'll notice as you get most of the paint out of the brush, the droplets will become smaller. So that's a good time to move them. Um, if you want to add a few droplets kind of up the beach a little bit further, where it's further away, that's a good time to kind of start moving your brush up. But you want to start down toward the bottom with those bigger droplets. Hopefully this is all making sense. Okay. 
Okay. Who's being rude? <laughs> And then I'm going to go to my last color here, which is brown. And do the same thing. There we go. Now, while this is still wet, it will dry a little bit lighter because we've watered down these, paint, these colors. But if you want to, while it's still wet, you can take your paper towel and kind of pick up some of that extra paint that hasn't dried yet and this will kind of make it a little bit more subtle which I prefer so there's our little beach <laughs> sorry the sun's coming in here so probably can't see it quite as well but that's the that's kind of the effect that I like on the beach there I think I might actually add a little bit of a shadow these rocks that are on the beach as well. Just with like a gray, just to kind of put them onto the beach. So I'm just kind of lining the underside of those rocks that are on the beach with this darker gray. Because otherwise they just kind of look like they're sitting there. They're not actually in the beach. Okay. I think that's good for now. The sun makes it more realistic and beautiful. Great, I'm glad you think so. Um, I'm going to take off the tape and I will also be showing the whole book because we are all done with this sketchbook here. So if you wanna see the rest of the paintings that are in here, you can stick around for that. If not, um, thank you so much for painting with me. I do really appreciate you being here. Remember that my Venmo is listed in my bio and my PayPal is linked in my bio. So if you'd like to leave me a little tip or gift for today, that is always appreciated. You can do that through there. Um, any amount that you feel comfortable with is totally um, acceptable. I just helps me out, helps me pay the bills. Um, my Etsy shop is also linked in my bio if you'd like to check out the paintings that I sell. This one is for sale in my Etsy shop, so if you want to take a look at that one, you can. Um, and my, I've got my Patreon, my YouTube channel where this will be uploaded as well. All of that is in my bio too, so just check out my bio if you're interested in my art and what I do for a living. Make sure you sign your painting. Make sure you put the date on your painting so you can look back on it later. And I do appreciate y'all joining me. Now, we're gonna go through the whole book here. So, I'm gonna move um, to the floor over here where there's no sunbeam, just so you can see all of the paintings. Thank you all, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm just reading the comments here. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. Here is the first one. This one was uh, April 16th. This was a fun little beach scene. Paint beach is a lot. <laughs> is it correct to sign when we copy your work? Yep, I am giving you permission. Here's this one. This is like a little, um, this is from Yellowstone. This is a buffalo herd in the field. Here's this one, this is a cliff. This one's not my favorite. I think I overdid the texture on that one, but thank you. I do watercolor, I, I do several mediums. I do watercolor for all of these paint and sips. So this was May 14th. This is Bowen Bay in Washington. Here's this one, a little bee <laughs> in the lavender. This one was uh, June 5th. We got another beach. This was in Turks and Caicos, June 11th. 
We got some poppy flowers. This one I taught how to do this gold border. So I like how that turned out as well. Where do you find the pictures? I uh, take a lot of my own reference photos and then I also have a website. There's a website called Unsplash, which um, has lots of royalty free photos. Here is, this is also in Turks and Caicos. Another beach, we got a lot of beaches here. Now I do have a question, a polling question. I was planning on putting these um, pages up for sale on my Etsy, but I want to know how much I should charge for these. So if anybody has any suggestions on what I should um, put these up for sale as on my Etsy, let me know. It's a little bit hard to price these kinds of things because they were just lessons. Sorry for the car going by. <laughs> Here's a sunset with this silhouette of the power lines and the birds. I liked doing this one. 35, cool. I will not be offended by any suggestions as well. <laughs> Whatever you think, I'm, I'm just taking a poll. Here's this one. I like this one a lot. This was from Ireland as well. This is a place called Glendalock. This is where I, um, we were doing this dry brushing technique that we did today. We did that here too. 45, okay, I'm seeing some kind of median answers here. This one was last week. Just took out the tape, can't believe I made this. That's wonderful, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Always makes me feel good when people like their paintings. I like this one a lot, I like the, the water here charge the time it takes to make them. So there's the problem with that with art is that as you get better, you take less time to make these paintings, but your paintings are better. So it's like charging for time is a little bit tricky. And then here's today's. So that's the whole, the whole book. 